Good day, uh, participant. We're now going to start our lessons for module one. Remember module one is on climate. I have also prepared the reference, a study guide for all these modules. If you want, for, if you want to read more about module one, the climate, you, will, you can uh, go to pages seven to nine in the study guide. All right, the, the, the outline of uh, module one, the climate, we're going to cover the climate, and then we'll go to climate systems, and then we will go to greenhouse gas effects. We will touch on global warming, and then climate change and its effects. These are the five subtopics that we will be covering for this lesson at this moment. All right, let's move to climate. What is climate? We're going to uh, define climate in terms of weather. You know very well that at times people will talk about climate in terms of environment. They will say, hey, the climate of the classroom was good or was bad. But in this particular uh, lesson, we'll be uh, defining climate in terms of weather. So we define climate as the prevailing weather conditions in a given area. So we see that there must be a given area and the weather conditions. What are weather conditions? Let's look at the weather parameters. We know that weather parameters include rainfall, temperature, drought, flood, wind speed, wind direction, humidity, uh, clouds, you know, those are all weather parameters. So it follows then that the, the prevailing uh, weather conditions in a given area, this is more like the average, you know, after a long time. So the average rainfall of this area is that, uh, for instance, if I may give an example, January to February, it rains. And then maybe March, April, May, it's dry. That's a general giving, you know. And they might say, oh, in general, the weather conditions uh, in the Southern hemisphere between uh, uh, June to August, it's cold. This is what we're talking about. But we know that climate in a given area, there are some factors that are influencing it. There are those that are natural factors, such as elevation, water, ocean, topograph, vegetable, and winds. We know that when you go to high grounds, it gets cold. We know that when you are in the ocean, in the coast, Sometimes the ocean will be moving away from the coastline and at times it will be moving towards the coastline during the day. So these are natural factors that influence climate. But there are also uh, other factors that can influence climate. Apart from natural factors, but we'll hear about that one as we go on. Now, we are going to talk about the climate system. We know now what is climate. So now we're talking about the climate system. And we define climate system as a very highly complex interaction of the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the cryosphere, the geosphere, and the biosphere. Now, what is the atmosphere? The atmosphere is the gases that are there. You talk about hydrogen, you talk about nitrogen, you talk about oxygen, you talk about carbon dioxide, you talk about nitrogen. These are the gases that forms the, hydro, the atmosphere. And what about the hydrosphere? The hydrosphere deals with the water, you know, that is there on Earth. And then the cryosphere deals with the dry water. 
I guess, ice sheet and so forth. We know the geosphere deals with the metal composition and the biosphere deals with life. These are the fishes, these are the animals, the people, they all form under the sphere. Now, when we talk of a climate system, we are actually talking of this highly complex interaction of these things, the, the gases, the water, the oceans, the ice sheet, the metal, the, the minerals, and the people, the way they interact. You, you will know that we also, as people or and plants, we are also sensors of weather. So much that when the weather is not conducive, we either have to keep ourselves warm or we have to find the shade if it's too hot. Similarly for plants, some plants will not grow if the weather is not conducive. Now, the climate system is influenced by external forces mechanism. Now, this external forcing mechanism, they are not part of this complex system, which is the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the sphere, and the geosphere, and the biosphere. This is basically our earth, where we live. This is our mother earth, where we have the climate system. So the external forcing mechanism could be winds. You know, we know that there are winds, they move from a high pressure system to a low pressure system. We know that there are trade winds that are moving from tropicals and so forth. This is all in the weather system. There's also ocean current. We know that the ocean is always moving with high tides, with low tide as the ocean moves. And because of that, Sometimes the ocean evaporates when it gets to uh, warm areas. Pop up and form clouds and eventually rains and storms. These are the areas where we get hurricanes, typhoons, because the ocean gets warmed up and there's got so much water vapor that can rise up and, and uh, from clouds, and we know that the ocean doesn't have any topography, so it's flat. And when there's a lot of wind, then this system becomes strong in wind, which led to uh, typhoons, tropical sessions. We also know that there's the sun, you know, that is always providing energy to the earth's surface. If the sun wasn't there, and then we didn't have the atmosphere as we will learn later, definitely the earth will be cold. But because of the energy that comes from the sun, uh, it remains cold, including what we're going to be hearing about very soon. So now we know what is climate system. We know that if we're saying there is a problem in our climate system, our climate system is changing. What exactly are we talking about? Let's move on to our next slide. Now, in the next slide, you can see the picture. This is what I was talking about. This is the interaction. As you can see on your left-hand side from the screen, you've got hydrosphere oceans. You've got the wind stress, the heat exchange, the atmospheric ice interaction. Now, if you look at the atmosphere, you can see those gases that are there. You can see the clouds as well. You can see those volcanic activities showing there. There is also a, 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 a fetch there, which has got a, a smoke some gases that are being emitted to the uh, atmosphere. You can see a house, you can see a road or a river. These are all what we talk about climate system. Now, if you look at somewhere just in front of you, you will see where it says human influences. When we talk about human influences, then we talk about building houses, building roads, cars, um, uh, factories, you know, the economy. 
and whatever is emitted from these systems, they influence the atmosphere. Let's move on. The next slide is on the greenhouse gas effect. What is the greenhouse gas in actual fact? We've already said that the atmosphere is made out of gases. And out of these gases, we've got the nitrogen, which takes a, a high percentage, followed by oxygen. And the atmospheric gases in the atmosphere, they form only 1%. And one of the atmospheric gases, which is in the 1%, is called carbon dioxide. Now, Carbon dioxide have certain properties. It is able to absorb heat energy from the sun and re-radiate this heat energy to the, uh, to the earth surface. Some of it backs to the sun. But as it re-radiates this heat energy to the earth surface, the earth surface gets heated up. When it gets heated up, it re-radiates another energy with a different wavelength, which is with a different speed. Now, this energy that is re-radiated after the earth surface got heated up, goes to the atmosphere. And as it goes to the atmosphere, it meets the, green, the, the carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide, because it's got the qualities of absorbing this energy and re-radiating and allowing some of it to escape to the atmosphere, to the open atmosphere. The one that it re-radiates to the head surface, it is now keeping the heat within the atmosphere and the head surface. Now, this process is more like what happens in a greenhouse. We know that in a greenhouse, normally it's used in a biological training where you want the plants to be grown at, under a certain temperature, controlled temperature. We know that in a greenhouse, the temperatures inside it are controlled. And they're basically controlled by this process because they will have a, a sheet of metal which will allow heat from the sun to go into the greenhouse and warm the greenhouse, but the greenhouse will not allow the, 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 the heat to go out. But now, what is happening in this process? Where the earth surface is also heating up and re-radiating and the atmosphere absorbs and re-radiates to the earth surface. The earth surface gets to a stage where the temperature allows life on earth, it gets warm. So if there was not this process, it follows that the earth surface will be very cold and there will be no life in it. Now, there are a number of greenhouse gases which have got this particular um, properties we will get to know them more as we go to uh, lesson module two. Now, this whole process whereby the atmosphere has the property of absorbing a uh, sun's energy, re-radiating to the earth surface and the earth surface could get heated up and radiate uh, heat energy of different wavelength, of different speed to the atmosphere, the atmosphere, absorbs it, some of it, uh, let it go to the uh, open atmosphere and others bring it back into the uh, earth surface, trap the heat within the earth surface to keep it warm. And this whole process is called the greenhouse gas effect. Now, having understood what exactly the greenhouse gas effect it's a very important process in the problem that we're having with changing climate. Let's move on. Now, the next picture is 
basically explaining in pictorial form and with words that all that I have been saying. You can see the sun, you can see the atmosphere, the sun radiation process through the clear atmosphere. You can see some of it uh, passing the atmosphere, going to the earth, for which most of the radiation is absorbed by the earth surface and keeps it warm. If you look on the other side, you see the infrared radiation emitted from the earth surface. Some of it is lost into the atmosphere. Some of it comes back. Now, it is here that you can see that this process, which is the global effect, keeps the earth surface warmer. So, in this picture, you see that uh, the molecules are being absorbed. And another thing that will explain this process is the reason why, when you look at the sky, it looks blue. The, there is no blue color in the sky. It is the reflected sun rays. You know, we know that when the atmospheric greenhouse gases uh, reflect the sun rays. For instance, if there was a rain and suddenly uh, it clears up in the sun, you will see the rainbow. The rainbow is of different colors. The rainbow is simply reflection of the sun's rays on the, uh, the, the, the humid evaporation. Because we know that the light is a spectrum of different colors. That's why when the sun is about to set in the evening, it goes red around it. It is because the red uh, is mostly reflected at that angle. So this is basically explaining the properties of gases, atmospheric gases, towards reflecting, absorbing, refraction, and radiation. Let's move on. Now, we know that the atmosphere, we've already said that it's got gases, you know, that allow the process of the greenhouse gas effect to take place and keep the surface of the earth warm. Now, this concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is kept naturally to, to support life on earth. So life, naturally these greenhouse gases are controlled. That is the natural system controls them so that they can uh, keep life. Of course, they, they're not so constant because we've got volcanoes, which also pump them naturally. We've got uh, ocean currents, you know, which also pumps them as well. But generally on average, they will always support life on earth. On the basis of the climate system, which is a result of the climate, of a given air. But now, human beings, through economic development, especially burning of fossil fuels, you know, big industries that are burning uh, fossil fuels, the smoke, cars, how many cars are there on earth? They are all burning oil. Now, oil is one major emitter of carbon dioxide. And we know that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. We are also in our food production, agriculture. We've got animals, we keep animals in how, and animals emit through their digested food that they excrete, they, that there is methane. And methane is, high in potential 
of absorbing and reflecting greenhouse gases than carbon dioxide. Now, these activities, that is of burning fossil fuel, that is of agricultural production, methane, uh, and so forth, they are now slowly altering the concentration level of the greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, which means they are pumping more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Now, as they pump the greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, it means the atmosphere with greenhouse gas concentration, the, the, the weight is higher now. The easiest example, which is more like an analog to this, would be the case of a blanket. Imagine yourself sleeping and it's cold. If you've got one blanket, you still feel cold. And what will you do to keep yourself warm? You will add more blankets, continue adding more blankets, continue adding more blankets. But if you continue adding more blankets, you start feeling warm. And if you continue, you start feeling uncomfortable and probably you might not even be able to breathe at some point in time. But because we human beings, we can control the level of blankets, we'll start removing the blankets away from us until we are remaining with a, now a certain number of blankets that we are comfortable with. But the Earth's atmosphere doesn't have that capacity or capability of removing these greenhouse gases that we are introducing into the atmosphere and increasing the concentration of it. So what happens is that as we increase, as we continue pumping them in, the earth gets warmer. The earth continues to get warmer to such a level that the complex system becomes more complex. The energy system becomes very difficult to understand. We know that energy can never be created or destroyed. So it means this energy must be shared within the system. So that's why you find that these activities that we have, factories, uh, cars, roads, uh, biodiversity, destroying forests for cities has a problem. They have a problem because they introduce these ground gases into the atmosphere. Now let's see that process of uh, introducing, increasing the level of the concentration of climate policy, it's warming up the Earth's surface. And as we continue to warm up, then we will see what is the effect of warming up the Earth's surface. Let's move on. We continue with the uh, greenhouse gases. Now we see what exactly are the human activities that is pumping the greenhouse gas into the atmosphere. Like I said, includes industrial processes, deforestation, agriculture, that's a animal farming, you know, where you have manure and the manure has got a lot of methane. Then use and use change, you know, whenever you are plowing, you are turning up the land, it also releases some greenhouse gases. The forest, if you cut the forest, the forest, we know that they absorb carbon dioxide for their photosynthesis and release oxygen that we absorb. Now, if we cut the forest, it means there will be no photosynthesis, so there's nothing that will absorb carbon dioxide. Energy consumption, you know, <coughs> excuse me, our energy comes from uh, coal, you know, become the problem. Waste management, you know, our dam site, there's so much methane coming from our dam site. We've got different sort of waste. There's solid waste, you know, sewage systems. We're talking of a billion of, uh, seven billion of human beings, which they have a sewage system 
those sewage systems, they've got a lot of methane as well. Now, the problem is on increasing the concentration of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Now, if we increase the greenhouse gas to the atmosphere, and through the greenhouse gas effect that we're talking about, the average earth surface temperature warms up. And this process of greenhouse gas that increases average earth surface temperature, this is what we call it global warming. Now, let's move on. Now we know we have global warming. We know the Earth's atmosphere is warming up. We know that uh, uh, the temperature, the average temperature of the Earth's surface is normalizing. So what are the effects? Because that we have seen that it is changing the climate. You know, it's changing the climate system. It's changing the climate. So what is happening when it changes the climate? We're now seeing more floods than we have seen. We're seeing more drought than we have seen, which is an indication that the climate is changing. You know, we see a lot of uh, ice sheet more melting. The biodiversity is confused. The ice bears are confused. As the ice melts, the water levels, the sea levels rises. The small island states in the oceans submerge. And what will happen to the people? Where will they go? So now we observe changes on the earth climate, which are primarily driven by human activities. And we have seen that this is mainly burning of fossil fuel. So what are the natural processes that also contribute to the changing climate, which are more a result of, of internal variation? and external forcing. In internal variation, we know that there's a El Nino and Nino. These are weather systems which are mainly found in the tropics, whereby the oceans will move from warmer side to a cold side. And as they move, we know that oceans, when the water, when it's warm, it transfers the heat to the cold side. And then the heat accumulates in the cold side. And as soon as the heat is accumulated in the cold side, the direction of the movement of the water changes. This is the Alanino Nalino. And this has got uh, different uh, weather events in different uh, areas of the continent, especially in the tropics. We might also uh, get more uh, intense tropical cyclone and hurricanes that are more severe, that are more strong because uh, the oceans are getting warmer since the average temperature of the earth surface is warmer. This picture then simply gives us uh, just a broad view of what's happening with climate change. We've got extreme weather, we've got fires, uncontrolled fires, We've got water shortage, the sea level rises, we've got floods, we've even got tsunami storms. Sage, these are part of the effect of climate change as a result of temperature increase. Now, when we've got fires, the biodiversity is destroyed. When we've got floods, the, the economy, uh, the structures, the development are destroyed. When we've got sea level rise, we know that the small island states uh, will submerge. And we have water shortage, we have drought, uh, there's no domestic water for both animal, plants, and human beings, and that is becomes a catastrophe. Now, moving on on the climate effects, the effects on weather events as a result of changing average temperature. I mean, sea level rise, frequency of droughts, flood, like I've said, etc. But there are external forces that can also result in changes of the climate change. Volcanic activities, changes in the sun energy, variation of the Earth's orbit. You know, the Earth is held by some forces in the, in the orbit. So if there's some changes, it means the the climate was changing. 
And also there is the effect on human beings and the environment. Well, if we could water shortage, there will be increased hunger, there will be water crisis, there can be also some health problems when we've got heat waves. We may also increase pest, biodiversity loss, and some of our tourism attraction may be affected and so forth. I thank you very much. This brings us to the end of this module one. Please take a quiz. Good luck. Bye.